It's really interesting, actually. So many political stories around, of course. Sunak very much involved with Israel, of course, with Netanyahu. Uh, he sort of... The rhetoric from Number 10 is changing there also with Biden. But also the Rwanda flights are back in the headlines this morning. They're saying, oh, these planes are definitely taking off. What do you know about that? Because we know that this legislation is going through. Essentially, the, the, what it says in the column is that behind the scenes they're tightening up the legislation mm. so so they are determined they're determined before the next election that plane is going yeah but i think they have to say that in the after the mlp poll this week you know yeah. um rishi sunak told the sun earlier this week so, so the mlp the one gave what the tories only 98 seats yeah it was it was a shocking i mean it was it was a bigger almost as big a landslide as 1997 and it, bigger than the Tory defeat predicted in the January MRP poll. So the trajectory <laughs> should be it's getting down. better, but it's actually <laughs> getting worse. And so I think to your question, David, I think they have to say sir, to some of this stuff to basically say to people, look, stay with us. Um, there was also an article today analysing that poll saying that reform UK would be taking 41 seats from the top Tories, um, even though they don't end up with any seats themselves, according to this poll. So the Conservative Party is, should now be thinking, how can we get those voters back? And I think we might see attacking to the right in the coming coming months. Can I just ask you about that, that YouGov poll? Because I think people won't really understand this. So they're, they're basically saying uh, the Tories with this one, 155 seats, which is uh, worse than Major in 97 mm -hmm. and worse than when Blair swept in 2001. Labour gets 403 seats. According to this, the Lib Dems get 12%, so do Reform, mm. but the Lib Dems get 43% and the Reform get nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's it's first past the post. It's it's a it's a messy system. There are boundary changes that which have been happening, trying to even out the constituencies. But frankly, if you live in a constituency where there's a large reform minority, your vote doesn't really get heard. Mm. So it, it is it is one of the flaws of the system, or or merits if you don't want to have a coalition based system like we do in Europe. So. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a bigger question here for reform. I mean, as, as Nigel Farage said last week, last time with UKIP, they got so many votes, but didn't get any, it only got one seat. Mm. So it, it is, it's mm. tough being an insurgent party. Uh, can we talk about Israel and Joe Biden's conversation, his phone call with Benjamin Netanyahu uh, yesterday, uh, talking tough. And in the aftermath of that, we've had Israel opening up two new humanitarian uh, mm. routes. Is that enough of a concrete step, as Joe Biden uh, called for, to satisfy the increasingly frustrated Americans? Look, I mean, I think these routes have to be functional. First of all, you know, they've been open and that's great, but they have to be functional and the US needs to see that aid is getting in, enough aid is getting in through these measures. And also that aid workers are not being killed, right? Mm. That they're safe for the international community who are working along these routes. Um, I think the, uh, that Israel also needs to basically give us more satisfactory answer to what happened last weekend with these attacks. And I think unless they do that, the US and the UK as well are not going to be satisfied. Well, and of course, these vehicles were tra travelling across a designated coastal route. They'd inform the authorities, yeah. the Israeli authorities. They were clearly they marked were, vehicles. They were clearly marked. There were three separate missiles. The, the vehicles were 1.5 miles apart. Um, Netanyahu's response is sort of, well, we'll learn from it. We'll make sure... It was a mistake. It was a mistake. We'll, yeah, make, we'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. That's really not good enough. And you are seeing Biden changing his language. And actually, it's quite strong now from the White House. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Biden, I think, has been, you know, losing patience with Netanyahu for a long time. You know, earlier this year, we were talking about uh, Israeli offensive into Rafa. You know, that's a location in southern Gaza where they had chased all of the civilians, mm. evacuated them to there. And they, then they turned around and said, oh, no, we have to go in there, too opening the question of <clears throat> where are civilians meant to go in Gaza. And I think Biden basically talked him down from that because that never really transpired in the mass way that was talked about. But from that point onwards, you know, Biden has been losing his patience with Netanyahu. Basically, I think the problem is there is no clear end goal for this war. Mm. Um, there is no day after victory plan. Um, there is no plan for the hostages. So what, what, what is the international community who have been so supportive of Israel, at least in the West so far, meant to do about that, you know, increasingly it's getting hard to make these kind of justifications for Israel. Um, and so that's why we see these uh, two routes opening up so quickly, because Netanyahu knows that he's on shaky ground as well. But then internally, it's an interesting situation for him because he doesn't want this war to be over that soon, because then the recriminations will be coming at him. Why did you let October 7th happen? Why are you not working more towards the hostages? He's got this internal war cabinet that has this 
opposition politicians in there who are af after his position. And the Israeli so, government line last night was we're opening up these humanitarian corridors in order that the fighting can continue. Right. Making direct correlation, yeah. which is quite the opposite of what Joe yeah. Biden was calling for, an immediate ceasefire. And Cindy, you, great to hear from you, Thank as you. always. Thank you very much.